What's up guys, welcome back to my beginner's tutorial series for creating an RPG game in Game Maker. And today's video is going to be a very easy one and we are going to actually just do collisions. So here we have all the code from the last video and this is our event code and this is our basically our step code, so the update code where we get input and we move the character. And before we actually begin, if you want today's full commented code project plus all of my game maker notes which is all here we've got notes on the collision functions as well as access to the extended version of this video come check out the patreon campaign that I'm running because that's where you'll get all these rewards plus a few other extra things so come check it out when you have the time and of course share it with other people but let's get straight into collisions. So we're going to use a very simple, very friendly, beginner friendly um, collision function here in GameMaker. In GameMaker, there's a plethora of different collision functions that you can use. We're just going to use the place meeting function. And I'll, I'll explain it as I type it out. So we're going to run an if statement first. So place underscore meeting and what it does is when we define what we want to collide with we are going to magically move our player object into the desired position check it if there's a collision and then place meeting will say yes there is a collision or no there is no collision so that's all you need to do uh, and, well that's all it does and we're not just going to check x and y, we're actually going to check x plus x speed. And in our curly braces, we're going to type x speed equals zero. So obviously we stop. We're going to do the same thing for y. So place underscore meeting. Um, x, since we don't need to check anything along the x axis, um, but we do need to check vertically. So we go y plus y speed. And of course, we're going to be checking the collider. And we, again, in our curly braces, we put a y speed zero. So that's that is like the skeleton of the collision code. It's not finished yet. But before we test it out, we want to make sure that your collider object is not solid. Just make sure it's not solid. Um, mainly because there's some older collision functions that are sort of deprecated now, they're kind of useless, uh, and you don't want to sort of make them solid. I mean, solid is still sometimes usable, but uh, it's not recommended. We're going to test out to see if we can actually run this code with an odd number. And this is where um, we're going to flow into the next part of it. So where our move speed is currently 3. Before it was 2, now it's 3. You can see here that we have, um, if you look closely, we have one pixel of space between our character and the wall, and so we can't exactly fit through the little doorway. If we, however, change that to 2, save your project often, let it compile and run, we move slow, but we do fit through. Um, if I'm going to guess, it's because the numbers are uh, even and because our test room, our grid size is even, so it's a lot easier for the um, the game to the compiler to sort of calculate things and makes it easy. But we want to make sure that if your if your movement speed is something like three or five or you know whatever number that you're going to use, we want to make sure that it's pixel perfect collisions. So we're just going to refine this with a while loop. So what while loops do is as long as whatever's inside the brackets is not true, then we just continue running whatever's inside the curly braces. So in this case, while not place meeting at x plus, and we're going to use the sign function that we used in the previous video, sign x speed y and the collider I'm going to put the curly braces in x plus equals sine x speed 
All right, let's take a look at this code just slowly. So as long as we're not at x plus one pixel to the left or right, then we're going to continue adding plus one or minus one, depending on which way you're going, to um, our current x position because we haven't actually made full contact. Let's test this code to see if we have the horizontal movement right, and then we'll put the y version of that in. So we have we're moving at three pixels. As you can see here, we're moving at three, and we can now collide with left and right. But we haven't put the same thing down for um, up and down, so we'll still have that one pixel space between um, the collider and the object because we haven't put the code in. But you can see now we can fit through the little gap that we've made there, and we still haven't got <laughs> Y collision, so that's a bit of a problem. We'll fix that now. And it's the exact same thing. It's just while not place meeting. This time, instead of checking X plus sign, we're going to just leave X as it is. Y plus sign, Y speed. And of course, we're checking against the collider. And again, it's the same thing, just for the Y axis. Y plus equals sign, Y speed. This, this solution is actually very common to use. So a lot of the other tutorials out there will actually give you this version of the tutorial to sort of get around it because it's beginner friendly and it's sort of it's easy to sort of get if you're making a game that's a little bit more fast paced so maybe you're making like a super mario clone or a metroid clone or something like that like a platformer in general this may or may not be useful to you just because it uses the whole object and sometimes you want to favor speed so we're um a uh, code execution speed I mean so we'll get to that when we get there um, and here we go we have now got that pixel perfect collision it's perfectly aligned and we're all good so that's that's quite literally the beginners version of collision code I'm gonna go ahead and write in all of the code comments so if you want like the full analyzed version of that then you can Get on. You can get access to it from Patreon. Just make sure that you sort of put down the right um, request. Um, and if you want the extended version of this, where we actually program collisions using other collision functions, so we have the position, instance position, and position meeting functions. We use that, and we actually take a look at you know specifically how you can use them and when you should use those different functions. That's all in the Patreon exclusive um, videos. So come check that out. The link is in the description. Um, and before we actually go, there is something that I want to show you guys, and this will be like a prelude to the next video. What happens when you're because we don't have like we have like diagonal movement, we're not gridlocked, we actually do come up with a bit of a bug, and it happens when you try to walk into the corner. So I'm trying to emulate that right now. And there it is, I've emulated it perfectly. Great. If you look here, we can see that we are one pixel into the collider object. In the next video, we'll be fixing that, and it's a little bit complicated, it's a little bit out of the beginner range. I would say it's like lower intermediate but it's kind of essential especially if you don't want this happening if you have like a top-down game you don't want this happening you don't want to get caught in corners because I can sort of I cannot move down I cannot move across but you know I can move out uh, it's not game breaking uh, but it is undesirable so it's a little bit of a bug and we are gonna fix that in the next video so stay tuned Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope to see you in the next video. Remember, if you want the full commented code plus the extended version of this video, then come out, come check out my Patreon campaign, or you can just give to my GoFundMe um, for you know your own set of rewards. Until next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. Bye.